स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया students so in the previous class we started with uh, volume integral and then we gave uh, or uh, i gave you the uh, the statement of uh, gauge divergence theorem and then we practiced one or two examples but since it is a very important topic in vector calculus we'll continue uh, practicing few more examples on gauge divergence theorem so let me start with uh, our first example So, example one for today. Um, so, our first example is evaluate evaluate um, surface integral x cube dy dz plus x square y dz dx plus x square z dx dy where s is the closed closed surface bounded by the planes z equals to 0 z equals to b and x square plus y square equals to a square. So, basically we have a cylinder. So, here the given surface integral is this one. Of course, uh, if you want to evaluate this surface integral, um, it would be um, really complicated uh, because we have to evaluate these three triple integral, uh, these three uh, uh, terms actually, three terms. And uh, we have to calculate the limits for um, for whenever we are integrating. So here uh, we have to calculate uh, limits for x, y, and z. For z, it is given. So it's relatively complicated. But if we look into the Cartesian form of Gauss divergence theorem, there we had. Um, so we can go back, and there we had f1, f2, uh, f3, and. Uh, we can write so f1 f2 f3 and uh, we can write this thing as um, so let me go back and uh, uh, yeah in the previous form uh, uh, i believe uh, when we are multiplying cos alpha by ds then we are taking basically the dy uh, the dy dz and then this one is our dx dz and this one is our dx dy yeah so, there was a small mistake in that formula. So, this one has to be f1 cos alpha, f2 uh, f1 dy dz, f2 dx dz and f3 dx dy. So, that is a, that's a small correction in our previous uh, previous formula. So, just make sure you do that. Um, so, here we have f1 dy dz, f2 dx dz and f3 dx dy. So, now uh, if I look into the formula, where is that? If I look into this, this function here, so this is our f1, this is our f2. Uh, this is this must be dz dx and uh, this is our f3 so by from cartesian form of divergence theorem of divergence theorem divergence theorem we have basically a surface integral over s x cube dy dz plus x square y dz dx plus x square z dx dy. So, this will be volume integral del del x of uh, f uh, 1 plus del del x of del del y of f 2 plus del del y of f 3. So, uh, del del z of del del z of f 3 uh, dx dy dz where our f1 is, I am just writing them at first of all x cube 
f2 is x square y and f3 is x square z. So, if I substitute all these things here, so this will be uh, um, del del x of f1. So, that means 3 x square plus del del y of f2. So, this is uh, x square plus del del uh, z of f3. So, this is simply x square, right? And then we have dx, dy, and then dz, right? So, now this will be basically uh, 3 plus 4 will 5. So, this will be 5 uh, volume integral x square dx, dy, and dz. So, this is my d, uh, this is this this Cartesian form of div, uh, Gauss divergence theorem actually made this uh, uh, this term or this integral uh, this integrand to reduce to a fairly simple integrand which is uh, basically 5 x square dx dy dz. Now, we have to guess the limits. So, in order to guess the limits uh, z is actually varying from 0 to b. So, guessing the limits for z is not complicated. Now, y will vary from minus of a square minus x square to square root of a square minus x square and x will vary from 0 to uh, uh, sorry x will vary from uh, minus a to a. So, minus a to a and y is varying from um, minus of a square root of a square minus x square to a square, uh, square root of a square minus x square. So, basically we take both plus and minus value and x is varying from minus a to plus a. So, first of all uh, we can uh, integrate um, we can uh, integrate with respect to um, uh, with respect to x, but here we can see that uh, we can see that uh, there is a um, there is a uh, symmetry in a way. So instead of uh, calculating the area in the in the whole um, in the whole circle, we can actually calculate in one of the um, in one of the uh, halves actually. So this will become five times uh, uh, two to four, and uh, then we have half and then this one is one quarter. So, this is basically x running from 0 to a and this one is y running from 0 to a square minus x square and then z is running from 0 to b x square dx dy dz. Because whatever you get the area in this one half in a way is actually the four times uh, and multiplied by four times then that will be the, uh, that will be the whole uh, area in a way or volume integral in this case in the whole uh, cylinder. So, basically we took the four times of that uh, volume in that one, uh, one particular uh, quadrant in a way. So, therefore, we had to add a 4 here. Now, we can integrate. And so, this is basically 20. So, we can first integrate with respect to z and this will be uh, basically b uh, and uh, then we can integrate with respect to uh, y and then this will be uh, integral x running from 0 to uh, a, if we integrate with respect to y, then this will be x square y, and uh, uh, so uh, this will be x square y, or we can integrate with respect to uh, x first. Uh, sorry, y, so we are integrating with respect to y, so this will be x square y times uh, dx, and uh, then uh, y is varying from zero to square root of a square minus x square right and then this will be 20 b times uh, um, so this will be uh, integral x running from 0 to a x square square root of a square minus x square and then the second limit is 0 times dx. Now, we have to evaluate this integral. So, evaluating this integral is not complicated. You just have to substitute uh, uh, x equals to some uh, a sin theta and then convert the whole thing in, in some polar coordinates and uh, then you will basically be able to evaluate this integral. It is just that it is slightly lengthy. So, I am leaving this task uh, up to the students. I am pretty sure you can be able to do that. And uh, finally, the answer would be 5 by 4 pi a to the power 4 b. So, this will be the answer. So, other than guessing the limits, uh, the rest of the things are pretty much same what we have studied before. So, this uh, uh, obtaining this limit is not complicated. So, I am uh, pretty sure you can be able to do that. 
So, this is how we uh, just using the Gauss divergence theorem you see the whole integral is simplified to some volume integral uh, a simple volume integral where of course, now here you have to do some complicated um, calculation a slightly complicated. So, it is simple from here to here and uh, yeah this is uh, one of the applications of uh, Gauss divergence theorem. Um, we will uh, practice uh, the next example now. So, let me consider an another example. So, evaluate example um, 2 I guess. So, evaluate surface integral x square d y d z plus y square d z d x plus 2 z x y minus x minus y d x d y where S is the cube, S is the surface of the cube 0 less or equal to x less or equal to 1, 0 less or equal to y less or equal to 1 and 0 less or equal to z less or equal to 1. So, here of course, it's ag it again falls into that uh, Cartesian uh, form category of uh, Gauss divergence theorem and if we compare like previous example, then this is our f 1, this is our f 2 and this is our f 3. So, I am not writing all those things, uh, I am just writing by Gauss divergence theorem or simply by divergence theorem. Sometimes, I am using small d, so do not get confused. Uh, so, you can write small d or capital D, it is up to you. So, our I s which is basically the surface integral will reduce to our volume integral I v and uh, del f del f del f 1 del x. So, this will be 2 x then del f 2 del y. So, this will be 2 y and then uh, del f 3 del z. So, this will be 2 x y minus of 2 x minus of 2 y d x d y and d z. So, 2 x 2 x will go uh, will be cancelled and then this will be 2 times volume integral x y d x d y and d z. So, now here uh, we have to substitute the values uh, for x y and z. So, since it is a volume integral our x will vary from 0 to 1, y will vary from 0 to 1 and z will vary from 0 to 1. Then we have x y d x d y d z. So, first we integrate with respect to z and the value will be 1 when z is 1. So, this is just 2 times surface inte uh, integral from x running from 0 to 1, y running from 0 to 1, x y d x d y. Now, we integrate with respect to y and then this will be 1 by uh, y square by 2. So, this is basically 2 times 1 by 2 and then we integrate with respect to uh, with respect to x and then this will be x square by 2. So, x square by 2 at uh, sorry x square by 2 and uh, x is 0 to 1. So, this is basically half. So, you see initially we had a very um, how to say complicated uh, expression and we had to evaluate the surface integral, but uh, all of these things are just algebraic expression and therefore, they must have uh, continuous partial derivatives. So, uh, just applying the Gauss divergence theorem, we were able to obtain this form here and uh, from there just substitute the values of x, y and z and then that will give us the required answer which is half in this case. So, uh, like this we can practice many examples. Um, so, I have uh, some examples in my lecture note. Um, um, we can, uh, um, so let me, let me consider an another example. All right. So, here we have uh, another interesting example. So, example 3 I believe. So, evaluate, evaluate surface integral of f dot n d s over the entire surface over the entire surface of the region of the region above the x y plane above the x y plane bounded by the cone.
by the cone z square equals to x square plus y square and uh, the plane z equals to 4. If uh, this uh, capital F capital F is 4 x z times i plus x y z square times j plus 3 z k. So, here we have to evaluate this surface integral where we have the given vector function and uh, the, uh, the, the given volume or the given surface basically for this surface integral is actually the, uh, the region above x y plane uh, bounded by this cone and the plane z equals to 4 actually. So, um, the terms in this um, in this vector function they are all algebraic function they are all algebraic functions and uh, basically um, in a way they are uh, product of x y and z square so they have continuous partial derivatives so we can use gauss divergence theorem so by divergence theorem by divergence theorem we have surface integral f dot n ds equals to divergence of v uh, divergence of f dv. So, divergence of f would be volume integral divergence if we take the divergence here then this will be um, 4 z uh, plus x z square plus 3 right. So, 4 z plus x z square plus 3 d x d y and d z you just have to take the divergence of this function and then you obtain this limit here. Now, in this case, uh, we have to get the limits for uh, x, y and z and uh, we have to remember that uh, the, the, the volume enclosed by this cone and the plane has to be above x, y plane in a way. So, um, the limit for z would be then, so the limit for z would be actually, uh, first of all for x would be uh, square root of, so for x would be, uh, uh, for, let me write uh, square root of y as so x would be minus of uh, z square minus y square to square root of z square minus y square. Then uh, for y is um, for y is when x is 0 so it is minus z to plus z and z is 0 to 4. So, uh, this will be 4 z plus x z square plus 3 d x d y dz and uh, now uh, we can uh, uh, instead of calculating in every uh, for this whole uh, this whole integral i can uh, uh, calculate in the in the upper half so then in that case uh, this will be uh, 2 times z running from 0 to 4 uh, y running from minus z to plus z and uh, this will be x running from 0 to uh, square root of z square minus y square uh, 4z plus uh, 4z plus uh, 3 dx uh, dy dz. Now, if we uh, uh, if we assume that uh, our uh, if uh, so this function basically um, so this function basically uh, is an odd function in x so this function is basically in the is an odd function in x so therefore that will be zero and uh, these two sum uh, sum of these two functions so 4z plus 3 is an even function so basically i have written a 2 here so that xz square is vanished because of being an odd function right so that uh, is taken care of uh, here and uh, now what we are going to do we are going to integrate first with respect to x so this will reduce to z running from 0 to 4 y running from minus z to plus z and if I integrate with respect to x. So, this will be 4 z plus 3 times x and I substitute the value. So, this will be z square minus y square uh, dy dz. Now, next we integrate with respect to um, y. So, this will be integral z running from 0 to 4 if I integrate with respect to y. So, this will be um, 
this will be um, or I can write this as 0 to z and then put a 2 here again. So, this is 4 and then I am integrating with respect to z. So, this will be 4 z plus 3 and uh, then I have uh, y by 2 square root of z square minus y square uh, plus z square by 2 sin inverse y by z and then this is y running from 0 to z dz. So, ultimately we will obtain 4 integral from 0 to 4, 4 z plus 3 uh, times uh, z square by 2 sin inverse 1 right dz. So, sin inverse 1 is pi by 2. So, I will take uh, pi, by, uh, pi by 2 outside and uh, uh, pi by 2 and then z square. So, this 4 will, will be gone and therefore, we will have uh, simply uh, so, uh, this uh, integral 0 to 4. Uh, we have 4 z plus 3 times z square and uh, this can be written as uh, 4 z uh, 4 z uh, plus 3 plus z square and then this will be reduced to z to the power 4 by 4 and z cube by 3. So, ultimately this whole thing will be z to the power 4 plus z to the power 3 times pi here uh, after integration. So, ultimately if we do the integration then this will be 3 by 320 pi. So, you see initially we had uh, this uh, surface integral to evaluate we could have done that we could have calculated the normal for this uh, surface and then we could have taken the projection and things like that, but it would have lead to a little bit complicated calculation. So, instead of doing that we took uh, the help of Gauss divergence theorem and uh, with the help of Gauss divergence theorem we, we can be able to see that uh, we just had to calculate these limits and then do this uh, simple calculation use the odd and even property of this function here. So, since it is an odd function that is why this term is vanished here and there and the, the rest of the functions are even functions. So, we I put a 2 here then I integrated with respect to x then integrated with respect to y and then integrated with respect to z. So, this is actually a fairly simple to do instead of doing that uh, complicated um, um, surface integral. So, this is um, another another example or application of Gauss divergence theorem. You might also be asked to verify. So, when you are asked to verify that is when the examples becomes very lengthy um, and um, hopefully let us let us assume that you will be not asked to um, uh, verify, but um, sometimes you might and uh, then in that case you have to evaluate the both surface integral and the volume integral. So, let me give you an example where you have to verify example 4 I believe. Uh, so, verify the divergence theorem. Verify the divergence theorem for f x y z equals to x square minus y z times i plus y square minus z x times j plus z square minus x y times k taken over the Parallelopiped, parallelopiped, zero lesser equals to x lesser equal to a, zero lesser equal to y lesser equal to b, and zero lesser equal to z lesser equal to c. So the solution. So first of all, let us draw our parallelopiped. So this is the origin. That's my x-axis. That's y axis, this is z axis and uh, if I draw then this is all right and uh, this is g, this is f a b so this is a b. C D E F and G. All right. So we have uh, eight faces, right? Yes. All right. So now we have to verify. So by divergence theorem, by divergence theorem, 
we verify that uh, surface integral f dot n d s is equals to volume integral divergence of f d v right. So, let me calculate the right hand side. So, the right hand side r h s equals to volume integral over v divergence of f. So, divergence of f that is our f. So, we basically have del del x of uh, x square minus y z plus del del y of y square minus z x and uh, del del z of z square minus x y d x d y d z. So, this will be 2 x 2 y 2 z. So, we will have volume integral x plus y plus z d x d y d z. Now, uh, x is varying from 0 to a, y is varying from 0 to b and z is varying from 0 to c. So, I can write those limits. So, x is varying from 0 to a, y is varying from 0 to b and z is varying from 0 to c uh, x plus y plus z and then this is d x d y d z. All right. And uh, then we integrate first with respect to x, then with respect to y and then with respect to z. So, it is a very fairly uh, easy um, thing to do and therefore, uh, this will ultimately give you 2 times uh, um, a square 2 times. So, this will give a square by b a square b by 2 um, a b square by 2 plus uh, we will obtain uh, So, uh, basically we will obtain uh, c a b square c and then a b c square by 2. So, 2 2 will get cancelled and therefore, we will obtain a b c times a plus b plus c. So, this is the required volume integral. Now, we have to verify whether the left hand side whether this left hand side is also equal to that volume integral or not. Now, here is the interesting part. This is not a very simple surface integral to evaluate. Here we have uh, basically 8 surfaces. So, on every surface of this uh, parallel prepared, we have to evaluate the surface integral and on every surface, we have to calculate this unit normal and uh, for every surface, uh, we just substitute that unit normal and uh, then we do the uh, calculation of this uh, surface integral. So, let me give you uh, an example over the surface. Uh, so, basically our surface integral would be sum of 8 sub surface integrals. So, surface integral on this part, surface integral on this part, this part, that other side, that other side, this side and the, uh, the, the down side of that parallel prepaid. So, basically there will be 8 surface integrals, sub surface integrals I would say and uh, when you sum them then that is when you obtain this surface integral here. So, um, basically what would happen is um, let me give write this term is equals to uh, there will be s 1 uh, f dot n d s. So, that is the first surface then the second phase is s 2 f dot n d s uh, then the third phase fourth phase dot dot up to s 8 f dot n d s all right. So, let us call this uh, face facing front is our s 1. So, over s 1 or uh, d e f g uh, our n is basically i and uh, x equals to a right. So, n is i x equals to a. So, therefore, this surface integral over s 1 f dot n d s is basically uh, z running from uh, 0 to c, y running from 0 to b and then x is a. So, basically a square minus y z times i and then uh, we have uh, y square minus z x. So, x equals to a times j and uh, z square minus a y times k and then our normal is i and uh, d x uh, uh, sorry uh, d y d z. So, when we take dot product with this these two terms will vanish and therefore, we will have we will have z running from 0 to c and y running from 0 to b. So, this will be a square minus y z 
uh, times uh, dy dz. Now, we integrate in uh, with respect to z first and then with respect to y it is up to us and therefore, ultimately we will obtain a square b c minus c square b square by 4. Next, we will integrate on the other side. So, if we so if, if d f g was this phase then uh, we will be now integrate with this uh, on the on the surface a o b c and if we integrate on that other surface then instead of taking i we will take minus i and uh, proceed in the similar fashion of course we have to take x equals to 0 because that is the plane x equals to 0 substitute here so over let's say i'm calling that one as s2 or uh, a o c b our n would be minus of i and x would be 0 uh, then our surface integral would be f dot n d s and uh, this will reduce to z running from 0 to c y running from 0 to b we will have basically here minus of y z right minus and then minus. So, this will be basically y z d y d z and if we integrate then this will give us basically b square c square by 4. So, you see when you sum these integrals then there will be some cancellation. So, surface integral over s 1 then s 2 sum them then there will be some cancellation similarly s 3 plus s 4 there will be some cancellation s 5 s 6 uh, there will be some cancellation. So, 1 2 3 4 5 6 so, sorry there will be only 6 integrals not 8. Uh, so, 1 2 uh, 1 2 then 3 4 and then 5 6 yeah there will be 6 integrals. So, on these uh, 6 surfaces uh, we basically obtain uh, 6 integrals and uh, when you sum them you will have some cancellation and uh, finally, uh, our surface integral would look like this over s 1 uh, dot dot uh, f dot n d s uh, then s 2 f dot n d s dot dot and so on. So, s uh, 6 f dot n d s it is not s 8 it is uh, s 6 and uh, when you write all these then there will be some cancellation and when you sum them then it is a b c plus the times a plus b plus c. So, this is the required surface integral and uh, therefore, uh, this verification process shows that uh, the Gauss divergence theorem is verified. So, uh, we will stop here for today and uh, we will continue with um, our uh, further integrals. So, uh, in vector calculus terms. So, next we will look into Stokes uh, Stokes theorem. So, we will I think we have practiced enough examples on Gauss divergence theorem. So, next we will start looking into Gauss um, Stokes theorem. So, I thank you for your attention and I look forward to you in your next class.